Football season is over, and on behalf of everyone at Wager Talk, we want to say thank you for the continued trust you put in our team of handicappers. Our ongoing success relies on the loyalty and support of customers like you. As a way to say thanks, from February 8th through the 14th, we're running a Customer Appreciation Week, and all daily pick packages at wagertalk.com will be discounted to $9. And yes, of course, that includes any 5% best bets, normally priced at 40 bucks. Once again, thank you for your business and trust in the Wager Talk family. Hey guys, welcome back here to Puck Time on Wager Talk TV. Good morning or good afternoon uh, for the few of you guys that are watching uh, in the part of world of the, of the world that I am in right now. And there's not many of you guys, but I appreciate you guys for watching this show. We have Brian Leonard joining us uh, today on the show. Carmine Bianco, of course, my partner in crime. Today, we are going over the New York Islanders as they take on the Penguins, the Carolina Hurricanes, in a great, great divisional matchup against the Dallas Stars, the Red Wings and the Predators, and we're going to talk about uh, two teams that are pretty competitive here, Tampa Bay and the Florida Panthers. So a pretty good uh, slate here for us. Um, also going to look at uh, the Golden Knights and the Ducks a little bit later on in the show. But uh, Carmine, I'll bring it to you, man. How was your night last night? It was good. You make me laugh. Uh, this part of the world that I'm in, you make it sound like you're like in Mozambique and it's 4.30 a.m. in the morning or something. Dude, you're on the east coast of Canada. You're an hour behind us Eastern time guys. So uh, with that said, uh, yesterday was good. Uh, winning day at Wager Talk across uh, all sports, which I'm pretty happy about. I, while I didn't have any NHL plays up, uh, we were tweeting from our uh, Puck Time Wager Talk account. If you guys aren't following it, uh, follow us on Puck Time. It's either Andrew or I uh, tweeting out from that account. At It's at Puck Time WT. I gave out the Leafs after they went down uh, one nothing at plus one seventy five, and that got there. And Andrew tweeted out the Boston Rangers over three and a half, and that uh, heading into the, I think the third period, and that got there as well. So uh, a good day if you guys were following that account. Yeah, I mean, Carm, if you uh, if you looked at the company chats that we have and what people are saying about where I'm from, and the fact that a lot of people that I've never even heard of where I'm from. That's why I say it like that. So I know I'm just in Canada, just like you. But uh, from what I, the grief I get from everybody, that's why I say it like that. Yeah, guys, great follow there at Puck Time WT. Uh, Carmine and I running that account, promos, tweets, uh, all that good stuff. Brian, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Half yeah, of a terrific day yesterday. Swept the board four and all, including a red hot uh, free play, 19 and eight on free plays now. And uh, it's been going really well. Uh, hockey's been uh, up 31 units since uh, January 27th. Yeah, everything's going real good right now. And uh, I've already put up one hockey and uh, two college basketball up on the card today. And I'm still searching for some more. So um, can't complain at all, no. That's always good when you can't complain. We're happy to have you on the show here today, Brian. Uh, let's get right into it here. And Carmine, we'll go to you first with the Rangers as they are, sorry, the Islanders as they take on the Penguins. Yeah, you had me uh, a little confused there. I was like, well, where are we going here? Listen, while there's, <laughs> you know, this is one of those ones I, I was looking at the prices, obviously, uh, overnight when they came in first. And while this is one where you look at the line and there's very little separation in the line, I still think the wrong team is, is favored here. Currently, I'm seeing Pittsburgh minus 115, the Isles at uh, minus 105. And I have the Isles on my numbers at... Uh, at a buck and a quarter, uh, minus 125. These are going to be the same goalies as we saw in all likelihood. It's going to be the same goalies that, as the tilt on Saturday where the Owls won 4-3. And, and they followed up with another good defensive effort in beating the Rangers. Uh, this is the Owls I'm talking about. 2-0 uh, at, at uh, Madison Square Garden or whatever they've called that arena now. And, and it, this could be signaling a, a turn uh, defensively for this Islanders team. We saw it last year with this team. They went through a spurt just before the pandemic where they couldn't stop uh, teams from scoring. And then all of a sudden, they just turned it around in the playoffs, made that deep run because they just played much better uh, defensively. And that and that's a, a torts team for you. So, you know, with that in mind, this is uh, two wins on the bounce now, 4-3 over the Pens, uh, a win here. Uh, this could be signaling better things ahead for this Islanders team. And uh, I'm all for taking them here. The, the Pens, for all the talent they have, are – and I'm not sure if this is going to make sense or not, consistently inconsistent. I'm going to use that phrase on this show a couple times. 
They just have a lot of, uh, of scoring up front. People talk about, you know, the Malkin and Crosby's, and, and yet this team cannot string wins together. So as far as, as far as it goes here, I'm on the aisles here. And it's very interesting, Karm. If you look at every single win the Penguins have had on this season, they've all been by one goal. This team has had to come back down two goals. They've had to, you know, fight until the final buzzer. And I haven't had the best luck going against Pittsburgh. I've been on the side of those two goal comebacks, but there has to be some regression when you're countlessly having to come back. And I think the Islanders are the better team. And I agree with Carmine's point there about the defensive ability from the Islanders really picking up here. Brian, do you agree with us? Yeah, I think uh, the Islanders are a little bit better team. At least that's what the stats are showing right now. Um, goals plus or minus per 60, five on five. They're slightly better. Uh, expected goals per 60, slightly better. Uh, this is going to be an interesting game from a rest standpoint is both of these teams are probably the best rested teams, not in COVID in the NHL. They haven't played in a while. I believe they've only played two games so far in the month of February. Um you would expect a good effort from Pittsburgh. This is, you know, you got to think this is a very important game for the way they played. Uh, they, the defense has gotten better. The goaltending has gotten a little bit better as the season's going on because it couldn't be any worse for Pittsburgh. And the scoring has been down. I think with the fresh legs, the way these two teams are matched up, I think the under five and a half, and I don't do a lot of totals, but the under five and a half makes sense for me here. Let's talk about our marquee matchup game of the day here, guys. And, Carm, I'm going to go right back to you with this one. It is the Dallas Stars and the Carolina Hurricanes. Hurricanes minus 130 here in in this division that I would describe right now uh, as very, very top-heavy. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we've seen what the, the top has done. We've seen what uh, Tampa has done. But now it's these two teams kind of battling it out. Uh the Dallas Stars face some COVID protocol issues. So they've played less games here, Carm. First of all, does that play any factor to you as far as your handicapping with the Stars? And uh, secondly, what do you think about this game? It, it, it didn't just because I t- took the same approach with every team out of the gate. I was a little cautious. I, I said, I, you know, as the first couple of weeks of the season came in, I would sort of reevaluate teams. And, you know, the, I, I discussed this one uh, at length with uh, Prez last night uh bouncing around some games and and this is one where uh i wouldn't call it uh, i know we were calling it the marquee matchup i wouldn't call it a marquee matchup but i get where we're going with this listen stars got off to a great start uh in their delayed season with uh four wins out of the gate you know the first one was an absolute blowout when they raised the banner but this is a team that's now lost five of six uh including two of them to this canes team and they just haven't looked good and and much like what I talked about previously about the Vancouver Canucks, who last season overachieved into the playoffs and have had a tough time bouncing back this season, uh, and it's a quick turnaround. And, you know, with the Canucks, it's a little different. They lost Markstrom, and I just don't think that Hopi is a great goalie there. This Dallas team still hasn't found their groove yet. And I can't get, I, I can't get on a team saying, well, it's going to come now. I need to see something out of them and uh, the first four games I, I just threw those right out uh just as as much as i want to throw these five out of six that they've lost out but uh having lost two in a row at home doesn't matter to me they could lose three in a row at home the this carolina's team has been competitive every single game thus far they've lost three of them but they've been competitive in them so uh you want a team that competes it uh when you when you watch when if you're watching these games and you see a team just didn't compete. It's a little different. Uh, this 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 Carolina team is going to come every single game. Reimer should be in net tonight. And despite a three point uh, one two goals against average, the guy is five and one, so he's winning games for them. Uh, it's a short price. Carolina is favored, and, and they should be in this game. So uh, for me, it's Carolina minus one thirty uh, or a complete pass. It, that's the only way you can go here. That was a point I wanted to bring up was the fact that Peter Morazic went down with an injury earlier this season and James Reimer, to Carmine's point, had to step in and it was a heavy workload for him. You know, it wasn't the same as what we've seen for most teams where, you know, you start one night, the next goalie starts two days later. It's been very, very consistent with James Reimer. So to Carmine's point, I believe the stats don't really show what Reimer has been able to do, but I do believe that we've seen 
over the past couple of games, the score is getting higher involving James Reimer due to that high volume of starts for him. For the Dallas Stars, uh, a lot of locker room issues I found. Uh, Anton Kudobin slept in for practice. His alarm didn't go off, he said. Uh, so that was kind of weird. And then he was benched for the game. They didn't even let him dress. The next game, there were still some issues. And I I factored that stuff in, Brian, to a team. You know, when, when that kind of stuff happens, it kind of rattles the whole group. Now the question is, he's back. Will they regroup here? I'm with Carmine, though. I do believe Carolina is the better team. I lean Carolina and the over. What about you, Brian? Uh, you made some great points, both of you. I, I just wanted to touch on the Penguins uh, for one last thing uh, that gives more power to the under in that game. If you're looking at uh, expected goals for percentage, Pittsburgh's dead last, 78.13 on the power play. Their power play has been terrible so far this year. Another reason to look at the under in that game. Yeah, I also have Carolina as the better team here. The problem I'm running into is, well, I like – I, I like Carolina all year long, and I've kind of faded Dallas, especially after they got off to those, those huge starts at the beginning of the year, offensively and basically defensively. Carolina's the right side here. I may be priced out, though. I'm seeing it, you know, 125. If I can get a little bit less than 125, I'd probably be here on Carolina. Uh, this is a team that uh, I just love the way Carolina plays. When you're looking at expected goals, the same thing happened last year. Carolina's one of those teams that, Puts a lot of pressure on the opposition, sort of like the Vegas Knights in that regard. Uh, they don't always get the goals in the net, but they're always in the opponent's uh, area and able to s- secure the puck and, and getting more points on the on the board. You would expect more goals on the board. Um, I like Carolina here, but unless, unless the line goes down a little bit, I think I may be passing, but I still might be on them. So if I get a little bit lower number, I'll, I'll be joining you on this. Good stuff there. Let's get into our line change segment here. The Nashville Predators take on the Detroit Red Wings. And I'll tell you guys, you know, a year or two ago, I might have told you, hey, this is going to be a blowout. But the opening number, minus 200, now minus 170. I said it yesterday uh, about certain teams not being able to hang with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And they're just looking absolutely rock solid. Right now, everybody can hang with the Nashville Predators. They are not too competitive right now. Their power play isn't very good. Their penalty kill isn't very good. Uh, I'm hoping that Brian has some expected goal stats for us with this team because it isn't very good. And I think Detroit will be competitive in this game. And I'll tell you one thing. I do not believe that Nashville deserves to be minus 170 in this game. Brian, what do your numbers tell you about this game? Yeah, you're right. Um, The Red Wings right now on the season are minus 0.69 in uh, goals plus minus for 60. Um, And Nashville's 0.47. So they're very similar. We took a look at expected goals. Actually, uh, the uh, Detroit is a little bit better. They're only down 0.18, whereas the Predators are down basically 0.29. One of the things that I looked at in this game, and, and I found it really amazing, first off, do you guys actually show where Nashville is opened as a 250 favorite here? That's what my, my line service is showing. I can't believe that. I mean, who in their right mind is going to lay 250 on Nashville? Obviously, the lines have gone down. We're looking at like 170, 175 at this point. But uh, Nashville is a team that is so bad on uh, penalty kill. They've got zero goals shorthanded this year. They've given up 19 goals on the penalty kill. 19 goals in 13 games. So that's basically one and a half goals. They're giving up every game on the penalty kill. Um, 19 and 13 games. The next worst is St. Louis to 17. And after that, you got to go down to 13 for the rest of the league. So that tells you how <laughs> bad this Nashville team is uh, when they're trying to kill a penalty. When you take a look at the power plays, both Detroit and Nashville are very similar. Uh, I, I'm not going to go out and say they're on team's favorite here because Detroit has played so poorly on the road. But uh, Detroit is, to me, is the best bet on the board at the current lines. I'm going to use this. I, I'm going to. This is going to be my best bet on on the show today. Uh, Detroit plus the 150 or so. Um, as you pointed out, you just can't trust trust Nashville at this point. Bringing up the spoilers, Brian. You trying to go back to bed on us or something? You're you're saving your best bet, uh, getting out of the way on us, man. Uh, It's okay. We'll we'll let you off with a little bit of a pass here. But uh, 
Carm, 10 and 2, the last 12. Detroit against Nashville, 1 and 9 in their last 10 in general. But uh, recent history shows they don't struggle against Nashville. Uh, nobody really struggles against Nashville. They're, I'm going to use that phrase again. Uh, instead of using the word um about 30 times during the show, I'm going to use the consistently inconsistent. And that is what the Nashville Preds are. On the road, uh, just a terrible team. At home, they play a little bit better. Uh, to make a case for Nashville, if you're going to make a case for Nashville, and it's very tough sometimes, is, you know, they're five in, they're, they've won one of their last six games. That coming in a game where they, they came back scoring two in the last few minutes against Florida in Florida and then winning the game in OT. Four of, their, four of those five losses are to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is a completely different beast. But you look at it and, you know, I really wanted to start this little preview segment and asking you guys, if you can find me a book where I can bet on the next coach to be fired, it would be John Hines because he makes decisions within a game. And even before the game, I, I just don't get. I don't understand how this guy went from New Jersey to Nashville. Uh, he's got to have pictures of someone because there's no way this guy should be a coach in the NHL. <laughs> With that said, Detroit's still 1-7 and seven on the road, outscored 30-14 to 14, uh, so far. And the Preds are going to play Detroit for their next eight games, sandwiched between some games against uh, Dallas, so I think, who are up next. Uh, they're going to end up at the end of the season. This this Preds team is going to be fighting Dallas for that last playoff spot because I think the top three spots are likely going to go to Tampa, Carolina, and a very good Florida team right now. So they've got to win these games. Uh, this It starts here. I don't want to squash Brian's uh, show best bet later on because I, I do believe at that price, uh, it's a very attractive price on Detroit against an inconsistent team. But for now, I would lean to... Uh, to Nashville here. I'm not going to lay that number. It's absolutely insane. If you're going to take them, you could take them in regulation time or completely pass on it. Good stuff there from Carm and Brian. You can find them both, of course, on wagertalk.com. It is customer appreciation week, guys. At wagertalk.com, $9 for every single pick, including the top rated 5% picks as well. At the website, head over to wagertalk and grab uh, plays from both Carmine and Brian. Uh, especially during this week. Great deals uh, across the board. Let's get into our dump or chase segment. And guys, I chose a favorite today that isn't the biggest favorite on the board. And Carm, we've been doing this show for a few weeks now. And, you know, there were some minus 200s. There were some minus 300s that we picked. So I decided to pick one that was a little bit less obvious, I'll say. But to me, it is obvious. And I mentioned this yesterday on our show with Prez. We only had two games. And I pretty much just said this. This is a team in a division in the Tampa Bay Lightning that are clearly at the top. It is very, very clear looking at the standings. They are up there. And you can look at this Panthers team and you can say, who have they defeated so far on the year? Was it Columbus when they were playing very, very poor hockey? Is it Detroit, one of the worst teams in the league? Is it a Nashville team that can't score more than two goals? And some might say to me, okay, well, what are you going to say? I mean, this is the only teams that were in front of their schedule. It was the teams that were in front of them. But the difference is, I've noticed Tampa Bay has absolutely no mercy. They will run that scoreboard up. We saw it in their last game against Nashville when the scoreboard read 6-1. to one, They could have easily dumped the puck in and protected it and kept things you know, at bay at 4-1 to one or 3-1. to one. They kept on pushing. We're seeing the lightning here, minus 165. I am definitely not dumping. I am chasing this play here. Karm, what about you? See, now you went through that whole thing. I'm going to have to apologize to you after we go off air because I look at Tampa Bay and, yes, uh, I keep saying uh, who who's going to beat this Tampa team? How can we get in front of them? But, like, to your point, uh, they're rolling over to this, the same type of teams. Nashville team that's not that great. Uh, Detroit, not that great. Uh, um, obviously, Columbus. You know, they lost to a good Carolina team. This is a Florida team that is a pretty good team. They're seven one and two. They've only lost one in regulation time, and they're second in the division right now. It's a team that can score goals. We saw it last year from this team. So if there's a team, and it's a rivalry, of course, uh, it's not a Montreal Toronto rivalry or one of the New York rivalries, but it is a rivalry nonetheless that's usually played within 
uh, 5,000 fans pre COVID. So with that, you know, with that said, you're not going to make a profit, uh, long-term betting against this Tampa team. It's just not going to happen. Uh, I would need more than plus 140 on Florida to want to take this Florida team, uh, uh, against, uh, against, uh, Tampa Bay. But this is probably going to be the most entertaining game of the day. I believe, uh, as, as far as that goes, this Tampa team is, is a, is a pretty good team. And, uh, I've seen it, you know, uh, last year, the year before they do play Tampa tough. I'm talking about this Florida team. So with that said, um, um, I, I, I'm in, I'm going to watch this game and I'm actually leaning to possibly taking the over in this game, the six goals, because we might see some scoring in this game. Now, before I throw it back to you, Andrew, uh, I'm, you know, I'm the oldest guy on this show, I believe. I think I'm older than Brian and I'm kind of like Grandpa Simpson. Sometimes things pop into my head. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say to Brian, congratulations, you had a great day yesterday in college basketball, including a slam dunk 5% winner. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Congrats, Brian. Uh, I'm 59. Uh, I don't know if you're that old, but... Uh... No, no, no. Okay, okay, good. Right. See, I thought, I thought you might have Carm, been... why are you that. laughing at him, man? Why are you laughing? Because he looks younger <laughs> than 59. I, everybody so. tells me that. It's, uh, But uh, I, I feel young, so that's all that really matters. Um, I'm torn on this game. Is it possible the best team in the NHL is overrated? Uh, if you look at goals plus minus per 65 on five, they lead the league 1.76, which is ahead of the Canadians. We all know how the Canadians got off to a great start. Then it drops all the way down to the Blues at 1.06. So as good as they are, they're a little bit overrated. You look at expected goals for 60 on uh, five on five, they're, they're up uh, 0 0.39. Good, not dominating. Um, the Panthers are in that regard are up, uh, 0 0.23. So, uh, it's a situation where the Lightning, yes, they're, they're playing great ball. They're playing great offensively, great defensively. Uh, it takes the balls to stand in front of them, which is why I think there might be a little bit of value here on Florida. Um, playing on the road is different than playing at home, obviously, even though, uh, still the home teams are dominating more than I thought they would in any other sport. Uh, there is a little bit of regression to that mean, so the road teams are having a little bit more success lately. But to catch a team, in a, and it, it is a rivalry, although I've been to games down in the Florida area in hockey, and you're right, they don't get a lot of fans. The fans aren't crazy like they are in some other places. Uh, but it's still a rivalry, and uh, I think the Panthers, the line's a little bit too high to pass on this Panthers team right now. Lean that way. May not make my card, but uh, to me, that's the right side. And I've been to a game in Vegas, and that is an arena that is definitely, uh, I'll say, an interesting fan base. They go at it from a different perspective than I've ever seen a hockey game. It's like a, an absolute circus show there, which is just so entertaining. And it's, it's very good. I will rest my case with this, guys. And I'm not, not trying to have a debate, but over the last 10 games, there's only been two where Tampa Bay has allowed more than two goals. Their problem last year was they got involved in so many track meets. This year, you know, they're playing better defensively, not just offensively. Good, Pretty good defensively as well. Our barn burner game for today, guys, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Anaheim Ducks go head to head here. The total sits at five and a half. And Brian, I'm going to start with you because we know the Ducks and their strategy and they want to win every game 2-1. They want to have great goaltending. They want John Gibson to play as well as he can. They want their defensemen uh, to protect the front of the net. They want their forwards to dump it deep, um, keep it out of their own end. But the fact is, the Golden Knights potentially can control a five and a half over on their own. You know, they could get four goals and all of a sudden we're, all, we're almost there, man. So with a five and a half here, how do you feel about this game? Yeah, this game is really interesting because you've got a Vegas team that dominates Anaheim uh, since they've come into the league. I believe the announcers the other day were talking about it's the biggest domination in the last four years of any team in uh, the N NHL. Uh, Vegas has just owned Anaheim. Uh, they've already played them, what, five times already this year. Um, Vegas at home is normally, as you mentioned, great. Uh, they're off to their best start in their young history this year. 
mainly because most of their games have been on at home. When they've gone on the road, they've been in Anaheim and Arizona. Uh, I like Arizona better than Anaheim. I think Anaheim is one of the weaker teams in the league. But when you take a look at the goalie situation, Anaheim will be using their number one goalie. Vegas will technically be using their number one goalie, but Flurry has been better in goal for the Knights. Um, Anaheim practiced uh, yesterday. They're supposed to practice a little bit today, uh, at least have a meetings. With the uh, Nosek uh, coming down with the COVID, uh, the Knights have done nothing the last two days. So you've got one team that's more in a groove in Anaheim, and you got a team in Vegas that uh, hasn't even gotten together for any meetings or anything. So um, I'm, I don't want to lay Vegas, especially if this number of lines come down a little bit, but I can't take Anaheim because, as you pointed out, the way they play plays right into what Vegas wants to do. And, and uh, Vegas has uh, got their new guy from St. Louis uh, back tonight after the COVID situation, so Petrangelo. So uh, the only thing I am concerned about is the other uh, best uh, defensive player uh, is uh, he got hurt and didn't play in the third period, uh, Theodore. Did not play in the third mm-hmm. period last time out. But if they're both back and healthy, uh, they can outscore this Anaheim uh, forwards from the defensive standpoint because they're, they're two high-scoring uh, defensive players. So uh, can't lay the number with Vegas because of the domination, but uh, everything else sets up that Anaheim may have some value. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not interested in this total too much, uh, Karm, because like I mentioned at the top, I think this Vegas Golden Knights team could get it on their own, but I'm not trusting the Ducks to play a factor from a total standpoint, if I'm betting this game from a totals wise, I'm laying the juice here under two and a half team total with the Ducks. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, Brian pretty much covered it all in this game. You know I mean, it, it's been a domination by, you know, by this Vegas team who are playing extremely well. You know, with regards to this total, um, this is how I would approach it. Uh, it's either going to be a player pass and it's going to be a player pass based on what I'm going to say right now, which is we know that uh, Gibson didn't play the last game because he took some stitches and to the face. And, uh, you know, I think he was back at practice yesterday. Uh, If I'm Anaheim uh, against this Vegas team, I don't even put Gibson in there. You've got games coming up where you're going to, you're going to be playing San Jose, Minnesota. um, uh, What else? Arizona. Those are much more winnable games with your number one goalie. Give them a couple extra days off. They did bring in, uh, I think it was Stolarts off the uh, taxi squad. If it's me, I put Ryan Miller right back in net uh, tonight against this Vegas team because uh, they overworked Gibson to, to start this season uh, season off. And he started great and then didn't look so good after that. I would give him a couple more days off. Uh, the next game isn't until, I think, the 15th. So you're giving him almost a full week off, uh, get some practice in, uh, heal up that face with the stitches. And, uh, and and put them in, in, in goal against teams that don't roll out three or four very good lines like Vegas does that can score on any shift that they're out there. Uh, you rebuild a guy's confidence, you, uh, you give him a little, a little bit more. So uh, I'd, I'd be refreshing those sites like uh, Rotowire that show your starting goalies. And if you see uh, that Ryan Miller's in net tonight, then you'd pounce on the over with this Vegas team. Um, that that's how I'd approach this game or otherwise it's a complete pass for me. Yeah, well, Carmen, it's pretty interesting because uh, in the summer when I was doing the baseball show with Dave Koken, he was complaining about uh, late information coming in, especially now that these leagues and teams are signing deals with sports books. Right. And I saw a lot of people upset the last time that these two teams played because let's be honest, guys, there's a decent drop off from uh, Gibson to Miller, right, Carm? I mean, uh, and Brian Absolutely. as well. I mean, so when you when you look at it, um, like you said, it's it's definitely a huge emphasis. So people were asking on Twitter to me yesterday. Um, you can look at goaliepost.com. You can look at dailyfaceoff.com. You can look at leftwinglock.com. You can look at rotowire.com. So many websites, uh, of course, that Wager Talk is not affiliated with. Uh, to go ahead and look at for these starting goaltenders because it's so crucial. And sometimes with this new era uh, of the divisions and scheduling, we're getting this information so, so late. So that's why 
if you hear us not talking about starting goaltenders as much, it's because there's still a question mark out there. Uh, and, and coaches are being a little bit more weird about it recently. Have you guys found that? Yeah, Andrew, but before I throw it to Brian on this, you know, if you're on Twitter and you don't want to go to one of these sites, just follow, uh, uh, I follow the goalie project on Twitter. Mm -hmm. it, he's a very yeah. good follow, which is NHL underscore goaltenders. And he posts as soon as the news comes out from any of the beat reporters, uh, which goalie was first off the ice at the morning practice, which usually signals who the starting goalie is. Uh, he will post it there. So you can follow along and, and get your updates on Twitter as well too if you don't have time to go to any other sites that's a, it's a it's a good follow brian yeah for myself uh, like devour said earlier that he wasn't going to announce his goalie until they got on the ice for the game and a lot of people were getting upset by that but the thing is if you were up on this as, as you guys are you're going to be the first in line to get the best number uh the people that are going to complain are the guys that see it late somebody happens to mention it on twitter uh they're going to be stuck with the bad number uh in this game we're looking at five and a half now uh, i agree with what you said if they go with the backup goalie if this game moves to six which i'm sure it will would you still play the over Carm? i'm not sure because uh here's the thing with <clears throat> my approach always uh with the, the five and a halves and the sixes and i think the nh i think the books are 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 because scoring is starting to regress. And someone uh, tweeted out about uh, one of the books catching up. When the six and a halves become uh, sixes with like minus 120-ish on the juice, on the over, that's when the books are catching up. Because that six number uh, pretty much covers them on, and this is where the five and a halves uh, are more profitable if you're going to take the over. Because those three, two games, which we see, and then you've got two minutes of empty net uh, play, that, that yeah. sixth goal goes from giving you a win to giving you a push. So um, long-term, the profit is, is is in those five and a halves if you're going to go over. On sixes, you now need a seventh goal, and you you don't necessarily get those, especially in games where I always say, uh, and Andrew, I've told you about this, and Prez knows, one of the worst scores you can have when you have a six and a half, believe it or not, is is a, a team winning by three goals at the end of the second, like a four a 4-1 type game because uh, it's very rare you're going to get those empty net opportunities, which you have to sometimes hope for in order to get to push that number over the, the line for a winning wager. So uh, to Brian's question, if it's at six, uh, not necessarily. I, I will be uh, active on Twitter trying to, uh, trying to find out information on whether it is going to be uh, Gibson or Ryan Miller. Uh, I'm not saying if it's Ryan Miller, it's an automatic over, but at five and a half, I would take the over. Yeah, Karm, those empty net goals are part of the handicap. I, I don't care what anybody says to me, if it's luck or all that stuff people say. It is part of the handicap, just like when you see in basketball, a late foul, uh, causing free throws to cover a spread. It happens. It's part of the game. Uh, and it's more beneficial with the five and a half, like you said. Um, you know, we're at a 3-2 game. All of a sudden, the empty netter uh, gets there and you get over the total. Brian, let's get into our power play segment. Give us your best bet for the show for today and promo anything you might have up for uh, Customer Appreciation Week. Yeah, I'm uh, right now, after the uh, sweep yesterday, we've got two college basketball plays up today, including a Pac-12 game of the month. Uh, been 7-1, and one, I think, in the Pac-12 this year. 6-0. Uh, and oh. I think it was 6-0. Oh. Maybe it's 4-0 oh on, on games of the month and games of the week. But yeah, we did. We've done very well there. Uh, Big Ten play also, and then our top hockey play, which we haven't discussed, by the way. Uh, my uh, my best bet on this show is Detroit um, going against a Nashville team. I just don't think is very good. Detroit got off to a slower start, and a lot of people have written them off. But uh, you know, Detroit and Chicago, they've looked better than a lot of people thought. Uh, Ottawa, maybe not. <laughs> but. Uh, well, I'm going to take the point, or excuse me, take the uh, plus money here with uh, the Detroit Red Wings. And I agree with Carmine. They haven't played well on the road, but this is a good spot for them. I think they come out. All right, Brian, giving us some uh, some plus money here for the show. Best bet. Love to see it. And uh, congrats to Brian over there with his sweep of last night. Check him out at wagertalk.com, of course. And Mr. Carmine Bianco, uh, soccer, hockey, 
Uh, so much going on. I know you're covering so many soccer leagues. What do you have up for grabs? And give us your power play for the day. Yeah, a couple of plays up in soccer uh, today. I think the first one goes at about 12.30. I will have a tennis card up later. A uh, very good night last night, 3-1 and one in the Australian Open. So we'll look to build off of that. And my NHL card's already up. So you can pick that up on uh, this customer appreciation day. Uh, as far as best bets for the show, uh, you know, yesterday I did give you an advance one. I uh, said to take it uh, yesterday. <laughs> If you didn't take it yesterday, you've kind of been priced out of the play, I believe, at this point. Yesterday, the show best bet for today was the Calgary Flames minus 125 in Vancouver. That line is now up to 155. So uh, I, I played it yesterday. You, you need to beat the juice on these ones, uh, on games that you know are going to move because long term, uh, it, it affects your bottom line. As far as today's show, I'm, I'm coming back with, I had San Jose as a client play, and I'm coming right back with San Jose again to beat the kings they're a better team than than this uh la team is and it, it's just another game where it, it's priced right i wouldn't want to go higher than 130 so uh, it's right where it needs to be take the san jose sharks uh, as your best bet and uh 13 and 2 right now with these show best bets so with a couple of them uh up yesterday and today we'll see if we can push this to 15 and 2 the, the power plays are red hot for you right now, Carm. Uh, the best bets are going very, very well. I was happy last night to cash uh, my first ever power play on a prop, and it hit pretty late in the game. But a winner's a winner with Zach Hyman to get a point uh, at a pretty decent price there. I know a few guys in our live chat room took him to get a goal and a uh, pretty sweet price on that over plus 250. Uh, for me, uh, not the biggest uh, plus price that uh, like Brian gave us. I'm going with a pretty juicy number here with the Tampa Bay Lightning, minus 160. But I believe they are a better team. They are a step up in class. They are on a different level than the Florida Panthers. Florida has looked good because they've played teams that would, you know, I think Carmine, Brian, and I could crack those rosters. You know, they, they have not looked good <laughs> against great teams. They are playing an elite team tonight. And uh, we'll definitely find out why. So I like Tampa Bay, guys. Play it on the minus one. Play it on the team total. Whatever you may like. But I think Tampa Bay is the spot for tonight. Uh, as far as hockey goes and, and action for me up at Wager Talk, um, I, I've been up and down with my volume. But today, we're going back to the higher volume here. A couple of plays I really, really do like for this card. I passed last night. Uh, Aussie Open, though. Off to a 5-1 and one start uh, for the Australian Open with tennis. It's gone really well. Uh, really been enjoying watching that tennis, although it keeps me up in the late hours. So uh, that's been kind of fun. But other than that, guys, uh, your best bets and your power plays for today are shown on the screen right here. I have the Lightning. Carmine has the Sharks, and Brian Leonard has the Red Wings, plus the price there, uh, plus 145. And don't forget, Carmine did give out that price uh, yesterday on the Flames, and kudos to him for getting in on that early. So make sure you're watching the show uh, on those days with maybe one or two games where we will talk about some games for the next day, guys. For Brian, for Carm, for all our producers, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow right here for Puck Time. We're just getting started with one of the busiest betting periods of the year. The heart of conference play in college hoops and the NBA and NHL are in action daily. Our golf handicappers prove that golf matchups can be beat, and our NASCAR guys can't wait until February 14th for the Daytona 500. Toss in soccer, MMA, and even player props, and the experts at Sports Memo have you covered. Get select Sports Memo handicappers for a full week, seven days of all access, all just for $49 each. You heard me right, just $7 per day. Get every pick they release in every sport, including any 5% best bet. To redeem this offer, just go to sportsmemo.com, choose your handicapper, and use coupon NEXT49 when purchasing a seven-day all-access pass. This coupon has limited use, but expires this Sunday with no exception, so act fast.